so let us begin and um, what we intend to do in this session the purpose of this session basically today is to provide an overview of sap esvohana one hour and so which we have with us obviously in one hour we cannot talk each and everything about uh, sap esvohana that's not possible that's not sufficient time so whatever we can discuss we will uh, discuss about um sap esvohana what is it and what does it do etc etc let me uh, briefly uh, introduce myself i think um, most of you know me and has been my student and all that uh, but some of them may not be aware so um i've been doing sap since 98 so it is almost many many years i've been doing sap uh, professionally i work with a three company Uh, I was associate partner with IBM. Um, I was senior director with Accenture and Capgemini, and um, I have done many many implementation of SAP. I cannot hear you. Check your um, audio options. And um, so these are some of the companies where I did um, uh, SAP implementation. Uh, there are various modules uh, which I teach. Um, and i am a mechanical engineer by the training and um, apart from that also i have been teaching uh, many of you know me and many of you are aware of me so i have been teaching sap i taught many many thousand students how many thousand i have taught i do not know i have no idea many thousand so continuing with our uh, Uh, discussion okay so let's continue sap s for hana sap s for hana is a next generation business suite okay so few things let me clarify because that's very confusing uh, matter when we talk about sap s for hana so sap hana is a database sap s for hana is new generation erp which sap came in 2015 sap hana sap came with sap introduce in 2011 so first and foremost a very distinct uh, difference that sap hana is a database and sap s for hana is a new generation erp or i should say enterprise application okay. so that is we cannot use both terms interchangeably we cannot use hana or sap so hana interchangeably they are two different uh, they are two different uh, things so sap hana is a database which as it came in 2011 sap as bohana is a new dimension new dimension enterprise application okay so now sap hana so when we look at it here this is the evolution sap r1 which came in 1972 this is the evolution then sap r3 
SAP R2 came in 1979. Then SAP came with SAP R3, which was a client server architecture in 1992. So SAP R1 was based upon mainframe. SAP R2 was based upon mainframe, and then came SAP R3, which is based upon client server architecture. Was SAP HANA database used in ECC? You could use an ECC. It is not mandatory. You had an option. So, guys, uh, for audio, please select audio option, which is in the number. You can dial in number or use left. Okay. So you have two op options. So please use um, appropriate audio options. And then you will be able to hear my voice, obviously. And there are two options. Then, uh, in, so this is I was mentioning about <clears throat> in SAP started in 1972, which came with the SAP R1, which used to be called Release 1 or R1. Then it came in R2. Guys, I, please do not disturb the class. Just choose your audio option. Everybody can hear me. Just typing message to me is not going to help. Let's look at your audio, please. Uh, R1, based upon 72, R2, came in 1979, SAP R3, which SAP came in 1992. Then uh, SAP, in 2004, came ECC. So if you talk about evolution of SAP, this is how it is. SAP R1, then SAP R2, then SAP R3, then ECC, then you have SAP S4 HANA. R1 was introduced in 1972. R2 was introduced in 1979, SAP R3 came in, SAP ECC came in 2004, and SAP S4 HANA, which is the next version of ERB, came in 2015. So this is the evolution by a year in last, since 1972, this is how SAP S4HANA has evolved. Okay. So, and then SAP came with SAP S4HANA, which was in 1970. Uh, 2015. Somebody asking a question. In, uh, in ECC 6.0 and Enhancement Pack 7 could be migrated or used on on our database. So if somebody wants <clears throat> EC 6.0 to be used on, you could. This was an option. Okay. This was an option. You can use along with other databases. But SAP S4 HANA 
is only support one database one database which is sap ana database no other database is supported that is the fundamental difference between ecc and uh, an sap ana but if you want ecc also you could use ecc on sap espohana version also if somebody wanted to do that but sap espohana can only work on one database which is sap espohana no other database is supported anymore this is how sap hana has evolved into sap espohana now why sap came with sap as hana database and what was the reason for that and all that so we'll talk about that separately but let us understand this slide so in this slide first and foremost we have a sap hana sap hana sap don't call it a database yeah sap hana although it's a database but sap don't use that term called database yeah if they use the word platform and why they use a platform will i will talk to you about like why they call it uh, if you see here sap hana they call it in the memory processing platform they don't use the word database although it is fundamentally a database only but sap calls is a platform now why it is a core a platform not just a database there is a reason for it and we'll talk about because sap hana although is a database but it also have many other functions and capabilities in it that is why sap doesn't call this as just an sap hana database it calls it a sap hana in the memory processing platform that is the terminology which sap uses okay so understand this words so many places you will see that that is in the memory processing platform so the sap hana is a database but sap will use the word in the memory platform q used to use database because for them it is not just the database it has also many other functions and because of those functions it goes beyond the database it has many other functions and even here on this slide if you see that sap hana is not a database it is a core with exclamation sign sap hana is not a database they confuse the whole world they will write sap hana is not a database it is a core all these terminologies good luck getting confused but fundamentally and as if we don't like to call sap hana as a database although is fundamentally is a database is a core what is this basically means that everything is working now on, on hana only so everything for everything hana is their core their all products is working on this engine called hana so they like to call sap hana as a platform in the memory processing platform although fundamentally it is a database so this is how uh, it has evolved since 2011 so if you look at it hana came like sap hana database it came about 10 years back so say how 
it has evolved from SAP HANA to SAP S4 HANA. So how that evolution happened in the last 10 years. So for, first and foremost, with all that uh, joy and pleasure and happiness, they came with this something called SAP HANA. And SAP HANA is in-memory processing database or in SAP language and in-memory processing platform. And so I will call also SAP platform, make SAP happy. Now then, in 2012, their business warehouse, if you remember, they used to a product called business warehouse BI. So they enabled BI first and foremost on HANA. So the first product which they migrated was business warehouse or BI. So that is the first product they migrated. Then in 2013, in 2013, they migrated their ECC. When said business suite powered by SAP S4 HANA, that basically means in 2013, since 2013, you could migrate SAP ECC on HANA. Somebody was asking that question. Can you use ECC on HANA? Answer is yes. And you can do that from 2013. So it was ECC 6.0 and Enhanced Spec 7. After that, Enhanced Spec 7, 8 also came. And if you are on the ECC 6 and Enhancement Spec 7 on that version, you could migrate your ECC also onto HANA. Then, in 2014, they came with something called a simple finance. There is one word, come, come, simple finance. So I will talk about what is a simple finance means. There is also simple logistics. So later on, I have a slide, which is called simple finance and simple logistics. So I will discuss what is simple finance and what does this really mean. But this thing called simple finance, whatever that is, SAP came in 2014. Then in 2015, SAP came with this fourth dimension enterprise application which is called sap s4 hana okay. why sap came with sap s4 hana what were the reasons for it so we can talk we that is what we're going to discuss in fact in our conversation that what is sap s4 hana can do and all that and all that and what kind of functions it supports, et cetera. So we'll talk about that. But I also wanted to give an inside political dimension of this product evolution. Remember, product evolution of SAP or any company for that matter are driven by two biggest parameters. All product developments are driven by two important parameters. One is business. Business wants some functionality, business some challenges, business some requirement, business some needs, business finding some issues. So we need to evolve and develop a product which can meet business requirements. So that's the one part. So that is why in the later part of my conversation, I will talk about what is simple finance, what is simple logistic, and what is the fundamental difference between simple finance, simple logistic, and all that is. So I will talk about all that. But I, before I go to the technical dimensions and the business dimension that why, what does it do, I also wanted to give a background of political dimension. SAP's glory was that you can use my ERP on any database. 
you use Oracle, you use Sybase, you use DB2, you can use this, you can use that. Whatever database you want to use, you go ahead and use it. I'm an enterprise applicant company. I don't care what kind of database you use, go ahead and use it. That was the glory of the SAP. I'm independent of database and I'm independent of operating system. You can use it in Unix, you can use it in Windows, you can use it whatever. But then in the beginning of 2000, most company was using Oracle database. So if you go to the SAP environment, you will see a lot of company use Oracle database. So SAP for an Oracle and SAP in the beginning of uh, 20th century, beginning of like around 20 years back, they become very, they were partners. And now after from the partner, they become very, very, um, you know, challenger to each other and they become competitor because Oracle also came with their ERP as well. Now, as we recognize that they are getting killed from the both sides. So when they sell ERP, their competitor or, uh, or, or their bitter enemies database is auto automatically getting sa saved. So they are lucky and then they are selling their own ERP too. That is why in 2002, 2003, SAP recognized that they want to go to database also. They want to, to give in a bigger portfolio and they want to go to database. And that is why they purchased Cybase in 2004. Then suddenly they hired this guy called Bishal Sikka from Stanford University. And that guy come up with this product along with his team called SAP HANA. Accidentally. SAP HANA, the in-memory processing technology is not developed by SAP, it's developed by Stanford University. But the product HANA is obviously developed by SAP based upon the technology. When they developed the product, this performance was good and wonderful product. And then Bisal Sikka become wonderful guy. And he was the first non-German to become onto the board. He was a board member. And on the line to become a CEO. Although Bill got it, not him. Then the problem was, although this is a wonderful ERP, is a, sorry, wonderful database, but nobody's buying it. Or most people are not buying it. Like most ECC, if you go, it still run, don't run on HANA. It's very rare that somebody's ECC running on HANA. So I said, you say, although I have a wonderful product, but nobody got changed because it's like you're changing your house. You're changing the foundation of your house and people don't want to change their house. So although HANA is a wonderful, wonderful, database but nobody is buying it so that's why sap was forced in 2015 to come up with this product called sap s hana in which they mandate it in which they mandate that you don't have any other choice of any database except my database although it has many advantages. It does many other good, wonderful things, which we're gonna talk about what does it do and all that. So, zero suite on any database. This was their glory. You can use my suite, you can use in any database. Wonderful, I don't care. Any operating system, I don't care. Then, they come up with this approach, the suite on HANA, which basically means you can put your ECC on HANA, which they came in 2013, but nobody doing it. They try to sell HANA database, nobody buying it. They try to migrate uh, ECC platforms onto HANA, nobody's doing it. And then, they came with SAP S4 HANA. They say, you want to buy my software, you only get onto my HANA database. So you have SAP suite on any database. Then you get SAP suite on HANA database, which came in 2015. And now we have SAP S4 HANA. And if you see here in SAP S4 HANA, now look at this thing very, very carefully. Look at this very, very carefully. In fact, I don't like this picture because this picture, the way it is being presented is actually misleading. 
is not correct presentation. But if you look at here, SAP S4 Business Suite S4 on HANA or S4 HANA, fourth generation ERP, you have a ERP, which is your ECC. And along with the ECC, you also have something called simple finance. And you also have something called simple accounting. Three things. So when you talk about from the business perspective, now I'm becoming a functional consultant. So what is SAP S4 HANA consist of? It comes of three things. ERP, which is my ERP, like what we do in ECC. You are a SD guy, MM guy, PP guy, finance guy, and you have to custom invoice and vendor invoice and sales order and purchase order and good seat. All those different beautiful transactions which you're doing since our childhood. Simple ERP, all those transactions. But along with those simple transactions, you also have two other things, which is simple logistics. And we also have something called simple accounting. Now, why this does, if you look at all these different points. Now, if you look at it here, I highlighted one, the second blood point because there's so many blood points, we can talk about all them in many, 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 many hours. We have something called real, real time. Real, real time. If I have to summarize the whole SAP S4 HANA Gaga, if I have to summarize what is SAP S4 HANA story is, in three words, it is real, real time. Real time. So <clears throat> it is, we have been saying SAP real time, real time, real time. We are listening this word real time, real time from our childhood. I'm saying this is really the real time. So real time, of course, but this is really the real time. Yeah. What is this really real time is? So we have a, since our childhood, we have been using this word, and which is called um, real time. SAP is real time, wonderful. But now what we are saying is, it is really real time. Bazooka, God appears, Almighty, really real time. Now, what is this basically means really real time and from where this concept of really real time coming from? So when I say really real time, what does this actually really mean? Okay. Really real time, okay? So I will uh, describe this slide. It's a real time because it's memory platform, yes. So what is really real time? Let's understand this slide. This slide I saw in one of the Sapphire, which I was attending, uh, I think a couple of years back in Florida. Now let's, let's understand, if we understand this slide, you will understand the whole story behind the CPS for HANA. This one slide, this one statement of Heso Platner. Heso Platner is SAP's co founder. So, this guy, Heso, he is still alive. He's a chairman and he called himself Professor Heso Platner. And Heso Platner is the chairman and he's the one who's the brain and, you know, he's still alive. So look at the statement of the House of Platinum. Really real time. A common database approach for OLTP and OLAP using in-memory column database. 
Understand this statement. A common database approach for OLTP and OLAP using in-memory column database. What does that mean? OLTP and OLAP. Anybody knows what is OLTP? What is OLAP? Anybody heard these terms? What is OLAP? What is OLTP? Anybody heard these terms? <clears throat> okay. Some people heard it. Wonderful. Online analytic processing, online transaction processing. Now let's understand what is this basically means and why we are talking about this right now. So, oops. So we said, well, TP, OLTP means, if the people who don't know, online transaction processing. And we have another term which you're talking about online analytics. That is OLAP. If you don't know the meaning of these two terms, make a note. If you know it, wonderful. Now, what is this basically means? What is the meaning of this is for our life? So, for us, when we create, um, let's say, sales order, or um, we create a purchase order, we create a customer invoice, um, we create a uh, incoming payment, etc., etc. Yeah, many, many transactions, sales order, purchase order, go to seed, you know, uh, purchase requests and delivery and custom invoice, vendor invoice, go to seed, good issues, custom incoming payment, outgoing payment, and, you know, bank reconciliation. We have all these different transactions. Yeah? You're doing all these transactions. When you enter all these transactions, they call online transaction processing. You are trading VS01, VL01, and VF01, and MV21N, and MV50, MV60, customer creation, vendor creation, material creation. They are all, these are all called transactional processing. These are your transactions. Now, when you are using your business warehouse, when you're using your business warehouse, business information warehouse is also used to be called BI. It used to be called BWs so if they change their name in you know, multiple time in you know, 15 years. So when you're running your report, when you're running your report in BW, or it's used to be called BIW, or it's called BI, and that reporting in the BIB, the analytic processing. Now, this is where the problem is. This is the main issue which SAP tried to solve. So, what was happening is that this OLAP and all that was happening in your ECC, and this OLAP was happening in a separate system in called BI. And this was one system. And uh, this was second system. So they were like a two separate systems. And they were connected. So we had always, two separate boxes which are 
connected to each other. That was going on. So you have one box where you are creating your sales order and purchase order and incoming invoice and outgoing invoice and vendor in purchase order and go receipt and good issue and all those transactions. Then you have another transaction, another box where you are doing your reporting. So you have a BI box. In that box, you are doing reporting. You have two separate boxes. And what was going on? And that will become the source of the all problem. Problem number one, there are two boxes, not one. So your source is OLTP or ERP, and your target where you're doing the report is OLAP, which is a BI box. So two different boxes. And in between, you have ETL. ETL is there in between them. What is ETL? You need to know this term. So E for extraction. Of data. Then there is a transformation of the data. Then you're loading the data from ECC to the BW. And then you have loading of the data. Okay. Make a note, ETL. Another problem is OLAP, OLTP is two dimensional tables. Because when you go to ERP, you have a sales order VVAC table and purchase order, you have the EKK table and you have a BSAC table, all those different tables. They are two dimensional tables, right? Two dimensional table basically means table which has rows and columns. So OLAP data, OLAP data is just stored in two dimensional tables in ECC and OLAP was data was stored in e dimensional cubes multi dimensional cube two different ways so you have two boxes which are connected. So you one box sending the data to another box, and then two boxes are the two different ways of creating data bases. Uh, your source is a two-dimensional table, and your target is multi-dimensional cubes. You're not storing in the same way. Then you are sending the data, and God knows what will happen to the data. God knows what happened. To in between how it will transform, something get lost, it is not real time. When you're transferring the data, you're transferring once in a day, once in a week, once in a month. You're always lagging. Time lag. When you're transferring the data, when you are transferring the data, we are transferring on periodic basis. For example, could be daily, could be weekly, etc. But it was never almost real time. Always a lag. Your source is ECC target is a BW, two different system, and always lagging. Always lagging. Always lagging. Therefore, 
we could never be real time and this was the fundamental problem if we tell you the what is the fundamental problem now now in sap s kohana there is no need for bi box both both bi both your oltp olap is happening in same box and because they are happening in same bucket they are happening in the same bucket same database one database therefore they are always really real time really real time now and why they are really real time because now you make your both set of data into one database and that is what is this picture basically suggest which is important picture for us to understand that if you see here so earlier you have your transaction this is your uh, ecc and this was your bw and then you are always uh, sending the data from ecc to bw through etl which is extraction transformation and loading sometime you're also sending some data into cache and all different other system that basically like apo or srm and all those things that basically means you always have multiple copies of the data your one data in ecc another data in bw a third data is in crm and a fourth data is in apo fifth data in srm fifth seventh data in a, a, because they are all different systems and because they are all different system therefore you are always maintaining multiple database of the copy of the multiple data which is complete fiasco and that was the problem that was the real problem and now with sap sohana you do entire thing in one database there is no bi you don't need bi you don't need bw even apo is the same database even your crm could be in the same database even your uh, other product like srm and all that in ewm they could be in the same database too like if somebody running ewm they have a, their own uh, system and is their own database so you have one copy of the database and multiple copies of the database and once you have multiple copies of the database obviously you can never ever be real time and that was the problem now let us understand how can you report the transaction data is what data is being no it is it gets saved right It has to save. Okay. Now, understand this though. Understand this. What happens in ECC? Pay attention to this. So when we are looking at your fi postings your customer information your product information your profit center your suppliers your customer invoice vendor invoice good receipt good issues and all that right you have a multiple tables we'll talk about that pay attention this is important so for example you're doing a material master when you save a material it goes to multiple tables when you enter a sales order it goes to multiple tables when you enter purchase order it goes to multiple tables if you create a customer uh, 
invoice, it goes to multiple table. If you create a vendor invoice, it goes to multiple tables. And a lot of those tables are either primary tables or secondary tables or tertiary tables. And many of those tables was actually holding the aesthetic aggression, aggregations. Aesthetic aggregations. Now, what is aesthetic aggregation basically means? So, aesthetic aggregation basically means some kind of a calculation they are storing. My purchase price, the, my gross purchase price they are storing. So, my quantity is 10, my price is uh, 100, 100 into 10 become 1000. That is a calculation. That is a static aggregation. So, you're holding that static aggregation in the table. And that is why you had all these different tables in the system. But in the HANA, you don't need them. Aggregation happens on the fly. So a lot of those secondary tables, table you need. You can't make table zero. That's not possible. But you can reduce those tables. So a lot of those tertiary tables goes away. A lot of those secondary tables goes away. A lot of those aesthetic uh, aggregation table goes away. A lot of those summation tables goes away. So a lot of such tables goes away. Those tables not needed. Pay attention, this is important. Those tables not needed. So many, many, many tables not needed. So what do you do? You do aggregation on the fly. You want to, so for example, I want information of customer and product in a five posting, I do real time. I want product information going to my product profit center, I do real time. I want in FI posting, my information, on, uh, when I'm doing my FI posting, I want my supplier, I want to update my profit center, I want to update my FI posting, and all those postings and aggregations happening on the fly. Not aesthetic, on the fly. So that basically means a important point for us, many, many tables goes away. We don't need them. A lot of secondary table goes away. A lot of tertiary table goes away. When you're creating a customer, vendor, material, sales order, purchase order, customer invoice, vendor invoice, all those different transactions, vendors say they are multiple, multiple tables. Now those tables are not needed anymore. Those tables are gone. And that is important. Tables reduction. There's many huge percentages of table reduction. Because of the HANA database, we can do those tables, those calculations in the real time. I will talk, I would like to talk about simple finance. What is simple finance and why this is important? Okay. So <clears throat> let me do the demystification with some important point. Let me make uh, some important point first and foremost. So fundamentally, what is difference? Because that is the one question between ECC and SHP, S for HANA, because that is the one very common question everybody has in mind. Okay, what is S for HANA? What is difference and all that? Okay. So the first fundamental difference is only HANA database. 
that is the biggest difference if you talk about on presentation layer on presentation layer on presentation layer because the functional consultant works on works on presentation layer right so what is the difference in presentation layer so let me tell you most of most of transactions between sap ecc and sap s4 hana are Hey, some differences. Some differences, but most, most transactions are same. Now, whether that similarity is ninety nine percent or ninety eight percent or ninety seven percent, I don't know. that's very difficult to quantify because there are so many transactions but when you creating a sales order via 01 you have via 01 as for hana when you creating a purchase order any 21n you have me 31 in cps for hana so they are all same some differences though so for example lot of uh, um customer and uh, vendor transactions are gone like many of those uh, uh, transactions uh, like we we are very familiar with uh, which like in case of customer we had uh, uh, transactions like um, um xd01 xd02 xd03 uh, xd04 uh, fd Zero one F D zero F D zero two F D zero three etc are gone, not supported. Um, you have X K zero one X K zero two X K zero three X K zero four. Uh, FK zero one, FK zero two, FK zero three, etc. are gone. They are replaced with transactions called BP business partner. So now in SAP Spahana. Um, you don't create uh, this customer vendor these transactions you go the transaction code bp which is a business partner okay that is what you do okay now this business partner transaction also if you are familiar with the crm for example so this uh, bp transaction code is there in crm if you are working on srm this bp transaction code is used in srm if you are using uh, uh, fscm uh, finance supply chain and all that uh, bp transaction code is used there so all those different transaction code like bp also although is there in ecc now Okay. So that is these are the some of the transaction code which are now supported. They are gone. 
then they are replaced with the transition code BP. If you want to make a note, you can make a note. But most of the transition code actually um, in uh, SAP S for HANA, they removed more then edit. So, for example, if we talk about uh, like an SD, we had a uh, export um, and foreign trade. In MM, we used to have an import uh, processing. They're gone. And why they're gone? Because now they use GST. So because you use uh, that. Oh, sorry, GTS, not GST. GTS. So you use GTS. So you can use this function at GTS so you don't need import export. So they actually removed a lot more transactions than what they have actually added. Okay. So those are so if you are a functional consultant for you, uh, well, nothing much changed. Okay. Um your world remain more or less same. There are some transactions, um there are some new uh, t code which has been added a lot of uh, some of the t code which is which are there um, like if you are in a inventory you have a transaction code like mb1c mb1a mb1b mb02 m they, those transaction codes are gone they're not supported anymore and you if you are now another thing, a lot of question of uh, a lot of people ask, ask about Fury. So Fury. So Fury is the interface for SAP, but it could be for even ECC. So, Fury's interface, of course, s hana can use it, and and SAP s hana can also use SAP GUI. So, like uh, we grown up using SAP GUI, right? So we can use same SAP GUI and SAP S4 HANA as well. So it's perfectly possible. We can use it in SAP. But GUI, we can use, we are using an ECC. And GUI can also be used in S4 HANA also. Fury can also be used in ECC. And Fury can also be used with SAP S4 HANA. So Fury has nothing to do with SAP S4 HANA per se. Fury is SAP's other interface which you can use as per your usage, requirement, need, etc. You can use Fury as an interface in SAP S4 HANA. You can use Fury as an interface also in ECC, provided you are in ECC 6.0 and Enhancement Pack 7. If you're lower than that, then it's not supported. So you have to be on that version and then you can have Fury. So Fury, now question we, people ask, why Fury? Okay, <clears throat> why SAP has come up with the Fury, yeah? You typed cannot. Uh, if Fury is interface for SAP, it could be for ECP and S4 and can use, SAP GUI also. So SAP GUI can be used for both. Now, why S Fury? Right? Why SAP came with the Fury? What was the reason? What was wrong with the SAP GUI? Like we are using SAP GUI last 25 years. So suddenly, what happens that SAP come with this Fury thing? 
there has to be some reason for it. And as it became, for a very simple reason, I will explain. In the world, computing is migrating. Computing is migrating from laptops to smart devices like tablets, like smartphones, etc. Right? So we used to have a desktop many, many thousand years back. And now desktops are gone practically. Nobody very, very rarely we use desktop. Now the whole computing moved from desktop to laptop. Now laptop is also getting actually slowly reduced. Actually internet consumption on a smartphone is multiple times higher than internet consumption on laptops. So if you talk about the computing, and the conception of internet and, and the people, the time is spent. So people spend far more time on the laptop, uh, on the smartphones than on, on desktop. And then SAP find a problem that SAP GUI does not work on a smart devices. SAP say, oh, voila, we have a problem. Our SAP user interface, which is SAP GUI, which is their in interface for all their application, does not work on the devices which the world is going to use or going to going using right now. SAP woke up in the morning and turned they, hurt, they hit their head into the wall and say, oh, we have a problem. So we need a user interface. So Fury user interface is independent of devices. You can use Fury. So SAP is forcing this thing called uh, um, this thing Fury interface because they want them to be relevant. They want their product to be SAP to be accessed from the desktop, from the laptop, from the smartphone, from tablet, from iOS, from Android, from Windows, from Mac, and all those different devices. And that is the fundamental regions that SAP had no choice. SAP had no choice. So they have to come with Fury interface and that is where the fury interface come in the picture fury interface has nothing to do with sap as for hana sap fury can be used on even ecc if you wanted to do it you can use sap fury on sap as for hana but sap people are very smart you have a much more fury apps if you are on the back end hana if you are not on hana the number of apps available is less. So indirectly, SAP telling you, uh -uh, please go to my SAP HANA, please. So beauty supported both, but indirectly, they push you to, um, uh, to the new platform. That is what they try to do. Okay, so here is the thing though. Um, I still have to talk about um, simple finance and it's still logistic. I plan for one hour. And we are already there one hour and 10 minutes. So this is what I'm proposing because I need at least one more hour to describe this in uh, more detail. What is simple finance? So I need one more hour to describe simple finance and also this word called simple logistics. Like a lot of people ask this question to me, sir, what is simple finance, what is simple logistics, what it is and all that. But I need one hour. So what I'm going to do is, um, I will uh, schedule, because it's already 9 or 10, I will schedule uh, another session 
for next friday um at 8 pm est i will ask someone to send you invite because it will take one more hour to go into the proper detail i don't want to rush to it uh, i want to describe properly and all that so it, i'm sure it will take another one hour and um, and we'll do it in next class so that's our thing we're going to do i'm interested to learn and i'm ready for all difference okay wonderful um okay so uh, first of all thank you all and uh, and uh, thank you and uh, we will do another session will another session basically means continuation 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 session next friday at 8 pm next friday whatever that date is um, we're going to do another session and we will continue and we'll talk more about what is um, simple finance what is simple logistic so and what are the differences some of the fundamental things because we keep hearing those things um, uh, you know differently because those things are different because those are some of the new functionality which sap has proposed so we'll talk about simple finance uh finance spelling is not correct simple finance and simple logistic okay um if you i think most of you know my email address my this is my email address d s a d h at my thing tree dot com and my this is my 9738857245 so this is my mobile phone okay so i think most of you already have if you don't then you can message me call me whatsapp me if you want i think most of you already have because most of you already my students okay thank you all i appreciate your time and the thank you for including me today you're you're welcome <clears throat> and uh, thank you all and talk to you guys next week Okay thank you guys Bye guys <clears throat> take care of yourself